Hey guys, I want to show you something really cool today. It's a new module that I've been playing with that I love. It's from a developer uh, that calls himself McClintlock on Discord. And I'll link to the module and to his page uh, from here. But what it does is it introduces this little icon here, this little dungeon draw icon, that's what it's called. And, and then you get all these tools uh, behind that icon. And so we're going to try this little plus tool here and I'll show you essentially what this thing does. You can't see it very well because it's faint, but there's a little green box that just got drawn. And that box established essentially a not only a floor, but walls around it. So if I drag a player uh, into my map, I can see that I am now in a walled room. But what's really cool, so that's cool already, uh, but check this out. So let's say I want to have a hallway leading from this room to the other room. I can create a hallway. And now it even cuts out the wall that was there and it leads my hallway down here. So you can see already the power of a tool like this. So I'm gonna show you guys today some really cool stuff that you can do with this. Uh, some advanced things that might not be obvious. Um, but we're going to basically build a, you know, a, a, a dungeon on the fly. And if you think this is cool with these white backgrounds and that sort of thing, check this out. I can put in what he calls arc pavement, right? So this, this arced um, cobblestone, and it will change the wall types and in, in design to match that. Uh, there's the basic that I just drew in. But how about a cavern? Right, so there's also this polygon tool where you can draw polygons with the same effect. And now I just cut open a wall where I can put a, a bad guy or some kind of encounter or anything in there. And you can of course drop tiles on these, which we're gonna do today. We're gonna drop some of my prefabs into here. I'm gonna show you how the system can work with other systems. But if I turn on the wall tool, you can see it just it very smartly redraws your walls and it makes them all work. Of course, I can use different textures. What if I wanted to use a, a texture from uh, Forgotten Adventures? So I have Forgotten Adventures here and I can click on this and this is all of the Forgotten Adventures textures and maybe I like this cobblestone. and it'll change everything to cobblestone. Now, I've been working with the developer on this with features. He's pretty active. He's already implemented a lot of new things and there's more things coming, but we're gonna just uh, do some of this uh, experimentation today and I'll show you guys what's available. Just want to walk you through some of the options. You've got dirt, you've got a dungeon floor, and in, pay attention to this too, this dungeon floor, I can decide that I want it to be maybe reddish in color. And so you really have a very large palette that you can play with in terms of uh, colors and uh, in types of floor. So he gave you the basic sort of color neutral foundation, and now you can make really lots of things with it. So I find this very, very cool. Uh, you can go do grass. You've got this groovy carpet. You've got a really cool hexagon uh, kind of cobble, marble metal and you know even some really interesting ones like this right just a uh, really basic looking you've got paper sort of parchment looking um, so he really thought of some good sort of foundational things that you can use i mean i just love this wood floor right so uh, let's build some stuff with this now i didn't cover this yet but you do have a door tool as well so if i want to draw a door from here to here it will actually create the door for me. And you're asking if it works like a real door? It sure does. And you can make those doors any size that you want. Let's see if we can draw a door from here to here. I haven't tried this yet. 
It's an absurdly large door. Don't know why we'd ever build it, but it sure works. And if you want to get rid of a door, instead of deleting it, you actually use this button, Remove Doors. And you can essentially just encompass the door that you drew and it'll delete it for you. You also have an undo and a redo here, which is helpful. So keep those in mind as you're going through this. Notice if I use my negative tool, I can also cut in anywhere that I want. But it also works in the middle of the room. So maybe I want a pillar to go here. And, and maybe I want a pillar to go in this room as well. Help me sort of obscure something that's sitting back there. And, uh, and then maybe I want some pillars to go in corners of this room. I know this is rough, but you guys will forgive me. And let's just put in a couple of doors where we think those would be logical. And I must have drawn this funky here. So let's try this again. I just love this. This is a just a very satisfying experience to me to be able to quickly draw something that I think is usable. Of course, I could change my defaults here. I could make these doors so that they are more of a brown color. Let's pick that. All right, and they'll fill with this brown color. So maybe over time, he'll introduce some other wall types, but I can even make my walls thicker. So I can change my wall thickness to say 25, and it'll change my wall thickness through the whole, the whole thing. This is already feeling pretty good. Of course, I can add lights. You can add just regular lights like this or, you know, torches. But if you have uh, prefabs or tiles or things like that, you can add those lights pretty quickly as well. So let's, let's try that. Let's add in this big room. Let's see if this dungeon overlay will fit. I'm going to put it there and I need to make a little bit more space for it. This is one of my dungeon overlays from my, my dungeon module. Let's see. Yep. Everything worked. So that's pretty cool. And let's, uh, let's grab another, uh, one of these camps. And so maybe there's some kind of orc camp going on in here. This should be more closer to the wall. And maybe there's uh, another camp over on this side. And we'll put some bad guys in there. So you can see pretty quickly, I've got a, a pretty compelling dungeon. I didn't reset the, the fog here, but if I did, it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. It was another thing I just want to show you is if you notice, if you guys have Ripper's 3D tool and we activate that, check this out. We've now got a 3D representation of everything. Now we'll see if, uh, if the developer implements this, but I'll just show you this. If I select all of my walls, and if I come in here uh, to texture, and I'm just gonna select a cobble texture that wouldn't be the right texture for the walls, but this will be good enough to, to kind of show you how it works. And if I update that, you can see you can even add texture to the walls. So if you wanted to play a 3D game, you could in fact do that with this and you could do it pretty quickly. So I think these two modules, uh, specifically uh, Ripper's 3D canvas and this uh, dungeon draw are, are a pretty, pretty cool combination. Let's drag in some animated torches. Put that one there.
that one on that wall. Yeah, maybe we'll add campfire. And we'll put another campfire just right here. Now, if you really want to get fancy, you can add tiles. So let's say I'll just use some of, um, actually use some Forgotten Adventures tiles here. Get some of these stone stairs and let's drag these in here. Let's drag them in at smaller size. And we'll hold down the Alt button and resize these. That is a pretty convincing stair leading down. And uh, maybe, maybe there's some kind of, you know, raised stair here as well, some kind of way in. That just, you know, breaks up the, uh, you know, th this is all about what kind of fidelity do you want to offer? Are there any tactical elements that you want to introduce to your, you know, your, your dungeon? And I'm feeling pretty happy with this. I'll show you one more thing. Uh, for those of you who use either my modular system or you make your own modular pieces, here's a here's a, a foggy room. It's got this fog effect that's sort of slowly glowing. And it's a room that is available in my uh, modular castle system, for example. And if I come into Dungeon Draw and I uh, go into here, I can create an egress point into my room. I might have to adjust my walls, of course. But you know, one of the hardest things about working with modular systems is just creating the connection between rooms, for example. So I really like that, uh, that he basically came up with a, a system that solves that as well. I draw my wall and I grab my player and all of a sudden I'm in this really cool room where I can have a battle and everything was done. So, you know, I've got hundreds of these rooms and I like the ability to be able to connect them up on the fly in a really seamless way. And so, uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and it, sh it showed you a little bit more about this. I think at first blush, it's easy to miss. Uh, how powerful this this module really is. And I'm sure I've already seen, I've been talking to the developer, he's going to have the ability to draw interior walls soon, which is huge. Uh, he'll have the ability to actually save your own theme. So if you like these themes, he'll be able to save it. And then I think he might even be able to uh, be working on making it so that, you know, maybe this room can be one theme and this room can be another theme. I'm not sure how close he is to that or, or how viable it is, but those are the types of ideas uh, that he, at least he and I have been tossing around. So uh, hopefully you guys have more ideas and you can leave them in the comments and, and let us know what you end up making.